Welcome back to the next video in our Thinkorswim tutorial series, where today we're going to be learning how to create our very first scan within Thinkorswim. Now, these scanners can be used to scan for nearly anything you can think of, but can be a little bit complicated if you've never used them before. So don't worry, we're going to go through the absolute basics of creating a really simple scan, and then we're going to learn how to turn that into a dynamic watch list. So that way we're going to be able to quickly see which companies meet all of our criteria at all times of the day, and we won't even have to go back to this tool after we make it. To begin, the very first thing we need to do is head up here to the Scan tab, and we're going to be specifically focusing on the Stock Hacker today. Later on, you might want to learn more about the Option Hacker if you're an option trader and you like to look for very specific option contracts that meet all your criteria. Or if you trade spreads like verticals or iron condors, you might find the spread hacker useful. But for today, since we're focusing on the basics, we're going to stick with the stock hacker, which again can be used to filter stocks that meet all of our criteria that we set. The very first filters that we can use, and a lot of people don't realize, are actually up here at the very top, where it says scan in all stocks, intersect with none, exclude none. These are actually the very first filters we can adjust. Beginning with the first one here where it says scan in all stocks, this is kind of our starting point. So at the moment, we're saying look at every single stock in the entire market. But if we came down below to category, for example, and you were somebody who was looking to trade things like penny stocks, we could come over here to the right and say only look at all OTC stocks. So only look for stocks that trade over the counter. If they're listed on an exchange like the New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ, I don't even want to see them. Or you might say, I only want to see stocks that are in the S&P 500. So we come down here to public S through W. And over here on the right, we can narrow it down to only those companies in the S&P. We could also narrow it down by industry if we came over here and we wanted to only look for companies in the real estate sector. We could do that. But again, this is really just our starting point, where we're going to begin. And in my case, I am actually fine looking at all stocks in the entire market. So we're going to come back up here, select all stocks. But one thing I do want to do, I want to exclude any over-the-counter. So I'm going to come up here to where it says exclude. I'm going to come down here to category. And I'm going to say I do not want to see any stocks that trade over-the-counter, any penny stocks. So now that we've got those basic filters down, up here right here where it says stock net change volume percent change these are just three preloaded filters that we could start with so beginning with the first one up here that says net change if i want to change that all i have to do is click on it and it's going to give me a list of all the different filters i could use and for this very first one i actually want to find the word last here so this is going to be the last traded price or the stock price and now that that's selected if i came over here to the minimum box I could now filter out any companies that trade for less than, let's say, 10 bucks. So we're saying the stocks have to have a minimum price of $10. And then way over here on the right, I could put the max. And in this case, I'm going to say a max of $500 per share. Now that that one's done, if we came down below to the next filter here, which is called volume, if I were to click on that, I actually want to change this one to market cap for this example. So right here, we've got market cap in millions. And for this one, let's say we wanted to weed out any companies that were small cap or smaller. So basically, any of those really small companies worth less than $2 billion, we don't want to see them. So with that market cap selected, I can now come over here to the minimum box. And remembering that this is in millions, I'm going to put 2,000 millions or $2 billion dollars. And looking at the max over here, I'm actually going to leave this blank because I don't mind if it's a $3 trillion company like Microsoft or Apple, or if it's only worth $50 billion. As long as it's above $2 billion, I'm fine. So now with those first two set, if we come down below to the percent change one here, I actually want this next one to be based off of the dividend yield. So we'll come right here and select yield. And I want to look for companies that pay at least a 1% dividend. So we're going to go ahead and set the minimum at 1. And to weed out any companies that may be overpaying, I'm actually going to come over here to the max and change this from, right now it defaults to 100. We'll go ahead and throw in 8. 
And that'll just weed out companies where I feel like that dividend might be a little bit too high and maybe it's going to be cut in the near future, which is not usually a great sign. So I'm just going to weed out those companies, just exclude them from our scam. But now with those three basic filters set, if we came down here below and hit scan, this is now going to create a list down here of all the companies in the stock market that meet all of those criteria. And if you look up here in the upper right hand corner, it's currently showing me 50 out of 1100 companies. So this list is probably way too long for me to actually look through and find it useful. So what I'm going to do is continue adding filters to really narrow down this list. Now to do that, to add additional filters, we're going to come up here to the upper right hand corner where it says add a filter. And then looking down below, we can either add additional stock filters, which is what we have been using. Or we could add things like option filters. That's going to be basing it off of things like the Greeks or probabilities. We've got fundamental filters. So that might be looking for growth metrics or cash flow or capital allocation. Or we've got things like study filters, which is where things get much more fun. These study filters can basically look for anything that you can think of. But because they're so customizable, they can be a little confusing to most people. So let's just say we did want to use one of these study filters. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. And you're going to see that the default filter that gets added for the study is right down here below called the ADX crossover. Just like before, if we wanted to change that, we'll go ahead and click on it to open up all the different filter options that we could use. So looking right here at the corporate action section, you could actually say only show me companies that have dividends upcoming or earnings or splits. Or we could come over here to the popular studies where we can see over here scanners based off of the MACD or the RSI or the VWAP. Or in our case, if we wanted to base this filter off of a minimum amount of shares being traded, we could come down here to the volume filters. And then over here on the right, we could select average volume. So this one right up here at the top, what it's saying right now is only show me companies where looking back the past 50 trading days, these stocks have traded greater than a million shares per day. So essentially I'm saying only show me those stocks that are fairly liquid, that people actually trade. But I could always adjust this if I wanted to. Maybe I want to look for companies that trade on average 2 million shares per day. I'm going to go ahead and bump that up. Now to check on that, to see how much this narrows down our list, let's come down below, go ahead and hit scan again. Now looking back below, we can see our list is far smaller. Instead of seeing over 1,100 companies, we now have narrowed that down to only 263. But this is where you're going to have to sit down and write down a list of all of the things that matter to you. Write down every single possible thing that you could think of that would weed out companies from this list. Things that would basically disqualify this stock for you from trading or from investing in. And then within this scanner, we could add all of those criteria. So that eventually this list is going to be refined down to only those companies you would trade right then and there. But let's just say that we're happy with this one for now. This one's going to be looking for larger companies that pay a dividend and are fairly liquid. People actually trade them. So now to save that, we're going to come up here to the upper right hand corner, click on these three little lines in the middle, and then down below, we're going to say save scan query. We're then going to be asked to give it a name. And in my case, I'm going to name it something pretty simple. Uh, let's just say large cap, even though these technically are not all large cap. And we'll throw in the word dividend. We can then come down below and save it. And by the way, if I ever need to access that again, if I ever want to load that scan or any other scan that I've made on this page again, I'm simply going to go back up to those little three little lines in the upper right hand corner again. But this time, come down below and load the scan query. That'll then bring up another menu over here on the left. And right here in the personal section is where our scanners are going to be stored. So if we look here on the right, the only one I've got in here at the moment is that large cap dividend scanner. But if I made any others and saved them, this is where I could find them. But honestly, the really cool thing about saving these scanners is not reaccessing them over here in the future if I need them. It's actually using them as watch lists. So for example, if I came over here to my current account watch list over here on my side panel on the left, clicking on the name, if you remember before, brings up this list of different watch lists we could access. And here in the personal section, I'm going to find the ones that we've made. So my index watch list, my large cap dividend scanner, 
and the My Watch List, again, that we made on the previous video. So right here, I could actually access my scanner, and this little purple circle tells me that the large cap dividend watch list is a scanner. And once selected, this list is now dynamically updating. So every couple minutes, my scan is gonna rerun, and these companies are going to be filtered to match those criteria that we set. This thing is gonna be constantly updating throughout the day, depending on what your criteria are. But you can sit here knowing, hey, AMT, APO, AES, all of these companies trade between 10 and 500. They're all worth at least $2 billion. They all pay a dividend somewhere between 1% and 8%, and they all trade on average over 2 million shares a day. But that'll be how you can create a scanner within here. Just keep in mind, if we go back over here to our scanner page, and we were to add another filter, let's say another stock filter, there are a lot of different criteria that you can filter for. So I really recommend you come in here and play around with it a little bit, try and get a feel for it, and stick around for some later videos where we're going to discuss how we can create scanners based on study criteria. So things like MACD crossovers, or let's say you're looking for stocks that are oversold in the RSI, or have recently had a golden cross or a death cross. We're going to cover all of that in about two videos from now, creating advanced scanners. But do play with this, try and get a feel for it in the meantime. It's probably one of my favorite features in Thinkorswim. Now, definitely stick around and check out the next video in the series where we're going to be learning how to use the active trader within Thinkorswim to place our trades as fast as possible. So those of you day traders watching or anyone out there looking to place their trades as fast as possible should probably stick around for this one. Go ahead and click the video below and I'll see you there.